Before we start today's video, I want to mention something at the beginning, an opinion of mine, and you don't have to agree with me. And that goes for any video I make. You never have to agree with me, of course. It goes without saying. And plenty of times I do have disagreements in the comments and we have nice little discussions about it. And it's great. That's what disagreements should be about. Discourse, you learn a little bit more about the opposing ideas and you grow from it. And hopefully both people grow from it. Not always the case, but always nice when it works out that way. So my opinion right now is about rooster teeth. It's a video about rooster teeth. I'm gonna say, in my opinion, I don't think that everyone who works at Rooster Teeth is a bad person. Rooster Teeth has been getting a lot of shade recently for any number of reasons that we could go into, uh, but we're not going to go into all that today. I just want to mention that despite Rooster Teeth coming under fire, so, uh, so to speak, over the last few months, I do think that there are good people working at Rooster Teeth. Now, there's also probably people that are not so good working at Rooster Teeth. That's an opinion, though. I will show you some things in this video and you will make an opinion on what I'm going to show you. And we'll take a look at those things in just a moment. But I want to also mention one more thing. Hypothetically, in an alternate universe, what if there was a content creator on a website, sort of like YouTube, but it's a hypothetical in an alternate universe, so it's not YouTube. And that content creator was making videos on a certain show, theories, reviews, whatever. Good content, promoting the show, saying good things about the show, hypothetically in the scenario. And that creator goes about it for two years or so, never hears any word from the company saying, we like your work uh, or anything at all, anything at all. Then that creator starts critiquing said hypothetical company in hypothetical scenario and suddenly starts getting outreach from people at said hypothetical company saying that they appreciate what that person is doing and that they're doing a good job and they feel happy that someone is taking their side. Wouldn't that be an interesting hypothetical scenario? It sure would. One more hypothetical scenario for you guys. What if in the last hypothetical with the hypothetical company, we had a hypothetical employee or contracted employee? Uh, someone that may represent the company, arguably, in this hypothetical. What if that person did some things that didn't look good on themselves or on said company? And what if not only were people in the community disliking the actions of said hypothetical person, but what if, what if there was also hypothetically people at said hypothetical company that also didn't like what said hypothetical person representing said company, arguably, might be doing. Wouldn't that be interesting? Anyways, enough about all of that though. Let's take a look at some things. Take a look at this little tweet right here. This person adds a certain voice actor for Ruby and says to them, if you are your associates, I think it should say if you or your associates. Uh, I'm not correcting the grammar. I'm just trying to clarify that for the people watching so they know what I'm saying, you know? If you or your associates are involved in sharing out Tug's private information, please pause, reflect, and discourage anyone from causing harm to themselves or others. Seems pretty reasonable, right? Seems pretty reasonable. What does that Ruby VA do in response? Tweets out this. Hey, Mr. Boyette, thanks for stopping by. An associate who has been hassled by Tug shared his name with me. I laughed at joke yesterday and said, I was holding it in my back pocket. I have not shared and will not share any said information. Tell Tug to stop lurking. First of all, this seems highly inappropriate to discuss joking around about having someone's private information in your back pocket, especially when you're supposed to represent a company. That's debatable, though. It's debatable if they really represent uh, the company, right? Uh, but, but even so, I will still say, even though it's debatable, a lot of people look at this voice actor and correlate him to the character he plays in Ruby and will then correlate that to the IP. And it's still not a good look, in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. So the person, you know, was more or less bragging about having Tug's name and just holding it in their back pocket. Now, they say they're not going to share it and will not share it. But to me, that seems more like a, you know, a play to avoid liability. You can say one thing on Twitter doesn't mean you're actually going to do or not going to do that thing. So that's pretty troublesome right there. I mean, uh, you know, again, the original tweet wasn't even bad. It just said, if you're involved in sharing out Tug's info, please 
reflect on it and discourage it. And doesn't really get taken seriously at all, it seems. Not only was it not taken seriously, now this person seems to joke around even more so, writes, see, you, you, I can respect in that you put your name to your work. May not be to my taste, but you're honest. Tug uses his anonymity to play the victim when convenient. It's how he stays relevant. So again, this is from the Ruby VA. They're claiming that a person who has their identity leaked online is playing the victim. And just commenting on something like this seems highly unprofessional to me, in my opinion. This VA also likes to comment on the Vic Mignogna case as well. Writes, please come back when you think the case doesn't go the way you think it will. In response to a tweet that reads, and the fact that none of them provide any evidence and three of them have been proven to be bullshit means nothing. So this person, it's odd to me. They go out of their way to talk about the situation, to throw shade at people on the other side, no matter what age they are. And it's weird because this person even seems to comment sometimes that they're arguing with children and they don't have a issue with that, it seems. You know, I find that very weird. I find that very weird. As a martial artist, I don't see myself beating a white belt. I'm a blue belt in jujitsu. If I beat a white belt, I don't see that as a big win. That said, some white belts are insanely good, especially if they have a wrestling base or if they're sandbagging. That's a term we use when a coach doesn't want to promote somebody to the next rank because they want that person to enter tournaments and just stomp at the rank that they are, even though they should be promoted because they're at a higher skill level. It's like me being a blue belt and making fun of a fresh new white belt when I beat them. If you're going to argue with people that you think are children, why are you even arguing with them? Are you really like, does that really make you feel good? I would feel good about beating a black belt or a purple belt or a brown belt. I'd feel good about beating another blue belt too. But you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. It's, it should be something that's more respectable, right? Like where's the honor in debating and trying to one up a bunch of kids on Twitter? My gosh. But you know, it wasn't enough. Making fun of Tug once or twice wasn't enough. This person had to keep poking Tug for having his information now out there. Tweets at Tug with a gif that says, Lighten up Francis about Tug being somewhat distressed about having his personal information out there now. And keep in mind, Tug has a family. Has a kid, the wonderful Lug, little umbrella girl. And I do believe that they also have another child on the way. And on the way being like around the corner very, very soon. And I could understand why that would be distressing. He has a family, lives with a family. He's got a lot of personal stuff going on. And uh, you say, lighten up, Francis. Great look. Great look, Ruby VA. This one isn't groundbreaking. I'm only showing it because it's odd how this Ruby voice actor has so much time on his hands to continue throwing shade at Tug. So... In another area, he says, deny knowing his name. Nope, don't deny it. So what? It's a name. One that I've never, I believe it said denied after that. Allegedly, it's cut off. Um, but it's odd to me that this Ruby VA spends so much time focusing on Tug and what Tug's doing and Tug's information. It's really odd to me. Maybe this person's not busy enough. Maybe he needs some more lines in, in, in Ruby Volume 7. I mean, look, I, I, I get it. He wasn't around very much in Ruby Volume 6. Maybe... Maybe give this guy a little bit more lines in volume seven. Keep him a little bit more busy so he actually spends his time on something productive. This VA even retweeted a tweet from everyone's favorite super lawyer on Twitter. A tweet reading, people who spend their days spewing garbage suddenly being terrified that they themselves were stupid enough to reveal their own identity is funny. Retweets that. Now... Do you find it funny too? Is that why you're retweeting it? Do you think it's funny that Tug's information's out there and his family is now at risk? Do you think that's funny? Do you think that's funny? I don't know. I don't know. Do you? Your actions paint an interesting story <laughs> for that question. And lastly, this VA also had to throw a little shade my way too, which is interesting. So this was in a response to a tweet basically saying, uh, Hiro Hei is a scumbag and you shouldn't watch his videos. And I, reg I regret giving him one view on a video. And then this Ruby VA replies to that and says, uh, a real weasel. Says I'm a real weasel. And what's so funny about this to me, and yes, I understand the separation between character and voice actor. Yes, I get it. Even still, I find this amusing because the character he plays has received so much shade from the fandom in like the last two years specifically where people thought he was this liar, like evil character. 
Uh, and I was one of the only people defending him, being like, look, I think he's justified for doing X, Y, Z, uh, even though it's not right. I can see where he's coming from and some other things. And, you know, I'm not going to go off on a whole tangent about that. I can make multiple videos about why I would defend that character. Just know that it's funny because I would defend the character and here the VA is uh, calling me a weasel, etc., etc. And again, separation from the two. But I still find now if you would like to support Tug during these trying times and only if you truly can, only if you truly can. Uh, because I know Tug wouldn't want you to put yourself in a bad spot by donating. So only if you can, give some consideration to this GoFundMe that was set up for Tug by Michael. It was set up to help him get to Bubba Fest because Bubba Fest is a convention coming up. Tug was already unsure if he would be able to make it due to personal and financial constraints. And now with this issue that has just arisen, it's probably more unlikely for him to make it. So hopefully this GoFundMe can help him make it there. Hopefully... He'll be able to have a great time at Bubba Fest. And the goal's already been met, 510 out of $500. But if you are inclined to donate and you don't, don't feel forest by any means, okay? I'm only putting this out there for people that are interested. Link in the description if you would like to help tug out with that. Now, let me also mention, I won't be at Bubba Fest, my friends. I know some of you have been wondering, and I've told you guys I won't be, but some of you are still wondering. And I probably will make a full video on this eventually too, just to, just to let everyone know. I won't be at Bubba Fest. I, I went to, you know, I went to Anime Matsuri, met Tug, Rikeda, Ty, Vic, and a bunch of amazing people. Had a great time. I then went to Anime Expo here in LA on the West Coast. You know, I had my little I Stand With Vic support going on there, trying to, you know, meet people from I Stand With Vic and talk about the movement and so on and so on and so on. And also just have a good time at a con. But Bubba Fest is a bit too far for me. That's like almost all the way on the East Coast. Listen. I, I got the West Coast handled, guys. I'm going to leave the East Coast to you guys. So as much as I'd love to go to Bubba Fest, and I really want to meet Flash, because I have a feeling Flash would be so fun to kick it with, too. Uh, as much as I'd love to meet Flash, hopefully I'll be able to meet him somewhere else, because Bubba Fest, it just, uh, I won't be making it. Uh, so I won't be there. But hopefully Tug will be there. Hopefully Flash, Rakeda, Ty, Vic, everyone. Hopefully everyone can be there. And uh, if you go, I hope you have a great time and a safe trip there and back. And some shout outs for the wonderful people who helped promote my last video from yesterday over on Twitter. And if it was posted elsewhere, thank you very much. I still do appreciate it. I only know when it's posted on Twitter, though. So shouts out to Spin Master Rockta, Anime Tony, Mr. Anime 343, Random Fandom, Fritz VA, Shades of Fire, Sun Pan, Metal Loner, Silver Dusted Flower, Bird Cosplay, Emerald Dragon, Celtic Wizard, Twice Baked Potatoes, and a shot of, yeah, the good stuff. Anyways, guys, I will catch you next time.